Hey everyone, welcome back to BeamNG, specifically BeamNG's speedrunning community. Now, in my last video of this, uh, that's this video here, BeamNG has a speedrunning community? Question mark. Well, the answer is yes, as we found out. Basically, I just went through things, I uh, just went over the community in general, and then attempted to do a few records of my own, which, if you want to see what happened to those, uh, I'm now in 20th place in Corridor and 9th and 9th in uh, Dirt Hopper and East Coast Chase. Needless to say, people really stepped up and uh, decided to beat me. Um, that video came out two months ago is when I posted my scores and since it's blown up, a lot of people have chosen to do uh, runs on especially the, the courses that I did. Yeah, I, uh, I kind of got blown away here. But reclaiming my third position isn't exactly why I'm doing this. I'm just very interested in this kind of thing. Uh, obviously, these just boil down to time trials. People said in that other video, like, well, duh, of course, BeamNG has a speedrunning community. It's a time-based game. Why would it not? But at the same time, I don't know, it was something that I had never thought of before. And then when I found the community, I was very interested to, to try it out. And well, I figured let's do it again. So my goal for today isn't to do a grand overview like I did before. Actually, I'm going to focus in on a few particular runs, uh, one, ones in particular that I'm interested in. And uh, I've actually been trying out a few of them just to get a good idea of how they, they work and what kind of tricks you need to do to uh, make sense of them. So the first one I'm going to be doing is actually the platform jump one. And now uh, what we're we're going to be doing first of all is something that people pointed out that I should have been doing last time and I'm gonna just go ahead and do it now but basically the best idea if you want to learn how to do a run quickly is just to watch the uh, first place video so let's do that now okay so you'll notice in platform run uh, he's starting in second gear but still able to get up to uh, full rev range so I don't know how that works um, in my testing I haven't been able to do that so we'll be practicing that uh, as we go forward here and then if you watch this run um, it starts off without any wheel spin although there's definitely wheel spin there and then uh, kind of just goes off in third gear just above 100 miles an hour or 100 kilometers an hour actually just quick conversion stays in second gear all on the top and then drives down the ramp for a nice 18.9 second run pretty choppy in the video but I think that might just be my recording software however I think that's something that I can replicate all right so this is destroy the moonhawk uh, basically it's the one where you need to jump off of that little ramp over there and run into the moonhawk to be able to do it really quickly and I was unable to even catch up to it before but you people were correct uh, you gotta drop down into low range and that's pretty much the only way to do it um, it just means that you can accelerate a lot better, but th what that kind of taught me here I'll do it again so you can see uh, but what that taught me is that uh, It's okay to make small modifications like that to the vehicle in order to uh, Improve the the run essentially like I wasn't really thinking that way um, When I was doing uh, the speed runs last time obviously I failed it this time and I'm, I mean I'm probably not gonna get it either, but it's just an example of kind of the thinking you have to get into when doing these. Now for the scenarios, you're not actually allowed to modify the car from what I can tell based on the rules, uh, but for time trials you are. Uh, in this case though, um, there is no modification that we can do to the uh, car. There's no low range or high range or anything, so we just have to play with what we've got. Alright, platform jump, here we go. So let me just pull up the times really quick. Alright, best time, just to refresh here is uh, 18 9 and then the time after that second place is uh, 19 2. The fastest I've been able to do on this was actually a 19 7 which would put me into sixth place but yeah I want to see if I can do better so I'm gonna run through it with you we'll see if we can pull off some of those tricks. So here's the general gist of things uh, accelerating from here uh, in first gear will lead to a lot of wheel spin but if we go up into second and third gear uh, we need to crease 100 kilometers an hour or so, get down into second gear, spin around twice, um, and then drive down this ramp also in second gear. And then I think we're going to get a pretty decent time. Yeah, that's a 20.7, uh, so that would actually put me into ninth place right there. Now, something to keep in mind is that was not my first time doing that. I have been practicing this one for like half an hour, just going over and over again, trying different techniques to try and figure out how to do it right. Uh, so if you have any pointers, and I mean we watched the video of how they did it properly, uh, I mean how they got the, the top score on it, but interestingly I don't know how they 
did this. Like, I can't start in second gear with full revs. Uh, maybe it's putting in the clutch or something like that. I guess that's possibly the way that they did it, but I'm also using a controller for this, so it's not exactly a possibility for me. Maybe a wheel would give a bit of an advantage, I don't know. That is definitely something that is a theme, though. Um, having a wheel would give a pretty significant advantage in a lot of these. Uh, like, I'm running a manual transmission, but I'm running an auto clutch, so that could screw me over, <laughs> among other things. The fastest time I was able to do actually did involve the handbrake, um, but with a run like this where every run is only 20 seconds, it's very much um, like down to the very small details. Like here, this is a really good uh, jump, but then I have to handbrake here, stay on the throttle, handbrake again, stay on the throttle, and then just go down here straight, and I should be able to do uh, it's a 20.6. So again, that puts me into ninth place. Not the best, but pretty consistent. Alright, let's run through it a few more times. I really do want to try and get under 20 for the sake of the video. I'll show you as well a different uh, starting technique that I've sort of come up with that seems to work. Um, I do get consistently better times using it, so that's my thinking at least. And this one's a little sloppy, but should be able to... Oh, jeez. I mean, we made it through the line. Oh no, never mind, we didn't. Just barely clipped it. So here is my alternate starting technique. Uh, basically, I put it in first gear and I just let it let it rev up just that little bit. And then when it gets up high in the revs, I uh, give a quick change in a second. And then only into third here, you don't need any more than that. Down a little bit, I'm going way too fast. But hard on the brakes. Uh, not using the actual brakes at all. Just handbrake. But putting it in second should mean a pretty reasonable time. Ooh, 20.4. Not bad. Oh yeah, I am going to post my times again for these, so uh, make sure to go ahead and beat them again. It's very interesting to see how many uh, people were interested in doing that last time. Alright, let's give it another go here, and then I'll do a few by myself, uh, just away from the camera and see if I can do anything good. And then of course, if I get a decent run, I'll just do the full thing in silence and you'll be able to uh, see how that goes. Ooh, that was rough. Goodness, this one is rough. Yeah, that's not gonna, not gonna pay off, I don't think. <laughs> 21, goodness, not good enough. Oh, there we go, that's a 19.7. That's pretty darn good. 19.73, uh, in fact, I guess that puts me up into sixth place. That is tying my best run yet. Oh, 19.8, goodness. Well, I think I'm done with that one, but that was a pretty reasonable run. I managed to get two decent runs in a row, and that 19.73 is actually going to be the best one that I do, so up into potentially sixth place, depending on the extra decimal point there. I think it's time that we moved on to another one. Alright, so this next one is actually just called Jump Trial. It's using the same covet again. Uh, I actually have been practicing this one as well. I don't know why, I'm just doing them all with the covet for now, but either way, this one, the fastest time is by the same guy as the last one, 14.679 seconds, and then the slowest time on the leaderboard is 20 seconds. I have been able to do better than 20 seconds, I know that for sure, so we'll get a time up on the board today, but, well, this one is pretty difficult. Uh, you have to time these jumps pretty much perfectly, and it's not so much about the speed as it is about like landing the jumps right. So let's go through it once and you can see what I'm talking about. Uh, I have watched the video on how they did it, and uh, it wasn't as informational as I would have liked. Um, basically, I think they probably did the same clutch drop technique to gain some speed, but like it, you basically just need to get these jumps to flow and not be bouncing as much as I am and that's the way that you do it. Um, but my time here, 16 seconds, that puts me into 13. Okay, so the start is definitely an area where we need improvement. I'm gonna try that same thing again where I start in first, uh, and then instead of revving up the engine, do that. But just jumping like that, it seems like, oh, oh boy. <laughs> but as I was gonna say, it seems like letting off the throttle on some of these jumps is actually a good idea, and then kind of getting back on the throttle when you're going downhill 
it seems to be the best way to go. And you're probably wondering, a lot of the longer trials are going to be a little bit easier to get times on, just because not as many people have uh, done those ones just because they're harder to do. Like, these ones are quick and that means I can try it a bunch of times and really min-max it, but with those other ones that's not really the case. And there's a 15.3 that actually puts me up into ninth place. <clears throat> now there's a pretty big difference between 15.3 and 14.6 in a time trial that's this short, so it's pretty hard to maximize things. I'm gonna give it another go though. I use that technique that, uh, that time, just going nice and easy off the line, and then I actually let off the throttle on these jumps um, just to, oh, this one is not gonna be good. Yeah. See, the fastest run is a very smooth run. It's not choppy like these ones have been, so I know that I'm doing something wrong when I can't get it to be smooth. Oh, goodness. Well, I think I just burst the fuel tank there. Uh, that actually might make it run a little bit lighter, which would be good, but not in this case. The Covet has just such bouncy back suspension that this is not getting any easier as I do it. I'm trying to make it go smoothly, I haven't finished a run in like five attempts. So I was going to say before, and I don't know if I referenced this or not, but the reason I'm doing short runs is because it makes a lot more sense for a video. Um, if I was doing a 23 minute bus loop or something like that, then I'm going to struggle to uh, be able to fit that into here. Oh, that's a 15-1. Goodness, that's my fastest time yet. That actually puts me into 8th place. Yeah, I don't think I'm getting any top 3 positions today driving the Covets, but at least I'm having a good time doing it. Ooh, this one is killer smooth. Okay, as I say that is the opposite of smooth. Come on, Covet. Ooh, that's a fuel tank gone. And a 16 second run. Ooh, that's horrific. Alright, this next one is called Suspension Trial. I have been practicing on this one as well. Uh, it's using a roamer, and this one I did not actually watch the video on how to do it, so I'm going to be experimenting on my own here uh, without taking the advice of somebody who's done it better than me. But the fastest time on this one is 35 seconds, the slowest time being 45 seconds. However, because it's a roamer, uh, we do have options to test different um, setups with this one. So we, it's not just all about uh, shifting and, and transmission things. This is actually going to be about differentials and such. So you can see um, we have wheel axles, we have uh, the ability to take off and on four-wheel drive. And so what I'm actually going to do for this is I'm going to go in low range and I'm going to take off four-wheel drive and just see if we can do this any better than uh, we would be able to otherwise. So yeah, we're aiming for 35 seconds. Realistically, we'll probably be able to do better than 44 seconds. Okay, revving this thing up and starting off in drive. <clears throat> it just has drive, it doesn't have anything else. But uh, coming at these things with some speed is actually not helping at all. That was much slower. But what we need to do is turn around these very quickly. And that's why I turned off four-wheel drive. I want to be able to do uh, handbrake turns like that. Okay, same thing around here. That one was a little bit tight. Uh, these bumps are not too bad. It's really the first ones that kill me every time I do this. A little bit of weight reduction there, no big deal. And then on the right side, the bumps are a lot easier. So hopefully we can still get somewhere. So 43 seconds, that puts me into, uh, yeah, actually that puts me into sixth place. Pretty easy, considering barely anybody has actually done this one. But of course I'm going to try it again. Uh, so we'll just start off and drive again. This time I'm going to try and do it a little bit cleaner. <clears throat> Specifically on these first bumps, like, you have to take them cleanly. It's uh, a disaster otherwise. Okay, that was a little bit better. I don't know if it was faster or not, but these bumps in here are not too bad. And then we gotta whip around once again, very, very carefully over these bigger bumps. These ones aren't too bad, but they kind of do mimic the first ones. Oh, goodness, that was rough. Oh, yikes, that's horrible. <laughs> that one is horrible. But if I can do that on my first try, then uh, I should be able to do a bit better. That's sort of my thinking with this, like if I can get a decent time on my first attempt, then I know, at least I think I know, that I can do a little bit better on my uh, further attempts. But one thing I have noticed is that low range is used in a lot of these ones, um, so I think I'm doing that correctly. And same thing with that, I figure now the best way to do it is to get onto the side of it so you don't take the bumps head on. I don't know if that's going to work in all cases, but yeah, just, just a little thing that I've been thinking about. I'll do the same thing here where I kind of just take the bumps on one side and then just try to stay out of the, the um, wall a little bit, spin around, and drive over the easy obstacles. These ones are not too bad at all. 
<clears throat> looks like I'm actually going to get a 39 second run. That's third place. Goodness. I apologize for my voice, by the way. It seems like I'm losing it a little bit as we get forward here, but I'm excited. 39 seconds, that puts me into third place, and that makes me the third person to get a 39 second run, or a second in the 30s. Uh, on this track, so that's pretty good. Let's see if I can replicate that success. I might be able to do a little bit better, but that was a really clean run, so I might not be able to get that again. Okay, so what I did last time was I just kind of scooped on in the side here. Oh, this is definitely not going to be better. Whoa, that's rough. Let me try again. Yeah, so what I did was I went with one wheel on the side, and I actually went a little bit slower in this area because it seems like gunning it is not the answer, uh, but that wasn't too bad. Just a quick rip around here, bit of wheel spin, and run failed. Okay, it seems I'm having issues replicating my previous success. However, oh yikes, that's rough. While I can kind of see why not as many people have done this one, it isn't exactly easy to, uh, to be consistent on the time with it, especially when I'm getting bounced around this bad. I really think this first section is key, like if I can't get this right, like I did in my fastest run so far, then I'm just not going to be able to make it. <laughs> As with this, just bouncing up and down trying to go fast, it's not going to work. Okay, that was way cleaner than before. Going to be nice and clean over these bumps as well. And then just a quick old J turn. Not a J turn, but a nice turn. And then we'll try that same technique on the sides. Especially over these bigger bumps. Okay, this one is a lot easier. I shouldn't say that too fast because... Oh, yikes, that was really rough. 36 seconds. I'm already over the time that somebody was able to do this in. Oh yeah, that was rough. That was really not good. Oh goodness, I think my 39 second run might actually still stand here. I might not be able to beat that. Well, pretty darn good, actually. I did not anticipate doing as well as I did. Uh, I guess we can do actually a bit of practice, because the if you go into free roam, it's still set up. Uh, but if I start just down here, I can kind of show you what I've been trying to do. Okay, you've probably seen it in the clips, but the general idea of this one is if you keep one wheel off on the side, instead of being bounced around like that, then you're probably going to be better off. And then you have to round these corners super tight, uh, which not being in four-wheel drive seems to help with. But then this section here is a lot faster. I don't know. Somebody was able to do it four seconds faster than I was, and I think it's... Uh, worth checking out why. So needless to say, BeamNG speedrunning, welcome back. It's definitely uh, fun to, to see the community come out, uh, especially after the support of the last video. It seems like a lot of people went on and decided to uh, do speedruns of their own, so that's pretty cool. And uh, I'm looking forward to continuing on doing a couple more of these videos, if, if people are interested that is. I want to try and get a little bit better, so <laughs> we'll see how that goes. I'm going to have to break out the wheel if I want to get any decent runs. So that's going to be it for this video, thank you for watching. If you're interested in this content, then be sure to subscribe, uh, as well as my BeamNG slash automation videos that I've been making a lot of. I've got a lot more time, so I'm going to be making a lot more videos as things go forward, at least until I start to work again after this whole uh, world issue is over. Anyways, I'll see you again in a bit for more videos. And as I do in every major video, I just want to say thank you to those who support the channel via the join button. If you want to join this crew, then be sure to uh, subscribe using that join button, and that means that uh, you can get your name on this list. If you're an advanced supporter, you get your name read out like these people here. Uh, we have Canadian Steel, Overlord, Dr. Ivo, That Right Stout Explorer, QT Bear, Terry Williams, The Most Random Person, Sick D Cars and Stuff, Boris Ramirez, Daniel, and Justin. Thank you for your support.